the ends, justify the means. Men in general judge more from appearances than from reality. All men have eyes, but few have the gift of penetration. Men are so stupid and concerned with their present needs, they will always let themselves be deceived. He who wishes to be obeyed, must know how to command. Never do an enemy a small injury. Make no small plans, for they have no power to stir the soul. One who deceives, will always find those who allow themselves to be deceived. Men are driven by two principal impulses, either by love or by fear. The promise given was a necessity of the past. The word broken is a necessity of the present. You must know, then, that there are two methods of fighting, the one by law, the other by force. The first method is that of men, the second of beasts, but as the first method is often insufficient, one must have recourse to the second. One should never fall in the belief that you can find someone to pick you up. Gold will not always get you good soldiers, but good soldiers can get you gold. The wise man should always follow the roads that have been trodden by the great, and imitate those who have most excelled, so that if he cannot reach their perfection, he may at least acquire something of its savor. Men are of three different capacities. One understands intuitively, another understands so far as it is explained, and a third understands neither of himself nor by explanation. The first is excellent, the second, commendable, and the third, altogether useless. People should either be caressed or crushed. If you do them minor damage, they will get their revenge. But if you cripple them, there is nothing they can do. If you need to injure someone, 
do it in such a way that you do not have to fear their vengeance. The more San has escaped from the hourglass of our life, the clearer we should see through it. Ability and perseverance are the weapons of weakness. Impetuosity and audacity often achieve what ordinary means fail to achieve. Men are so simple of mind, and so much dominated by their immediate needs, that a deceitful man will always find plenty who are ready to be deceived. A wise ruler should rely on what is under his own control, not on what is under the control of others. God is not willing to do everything, and thus take away our free will and that share of glory, which belongs to us. It is better to act and repent, than not to act and regret. Power is the pivot on which everything hinges. He who has the power is always right. The weaker is always wrong. Always assume incompetence before looking for conspiracy. Everyone sees what you appear to be. Few experience what you really are. The lion cannot protect himself from traps, and the fox cannot defend himself from wolves. One must therefore be a fox to recognize traps and a lion to frighten wolves. A government which does not trust its citizens to be armed, is not itself to be trusted. The first method for estimating the intelligence of a ruler, is to look at the men he has around him.
Women are the most charitable creatures and the most troublesome. He who shuns women passes up the trouble, but also the benefits. He who puts up with them gains the benefits, but also the trouble. As the saying goes, there's no honey without bees. There is nothing more important than appearing to be religious. The wise man does at once what the fool does finally. The unarmed man is not just defenseless, he is also contemptible. The state is not an organism capable of bringing either moral or material improvements to the populace, but merely a vehicle of power for the men and party in power. Everyone who wants to know what will happen or to examine what has happened Everything in this world, in any epoch, has their replicas in antiquity. It is double pleasure to deceive the deceiver. There is nothing as likely to succeed as what the enemy believes you cannot attempt. Entrepreneurs are simply those who understand that there is little difference between obstacle and opportunity, and are able to turn both to their advantage. There is no other way to guard yourself against flattery than by making men understand that telling you the truth will not offend you. Hatred is gained as much by good works as by evil. Where the willingness is great, the difficulties cannot be great. Whosoever desires constant success, 
must change his conduct with the times. It is not titles that honor men, but men that honor titles. A battle that you win cancels any other bad action of yours. In the same way, by losing one, all the good things worked by you before become vain. He who builds on the people, builds on the mud. The people desire nothing more than to be led. Few men are brave by nature, but good discipline and experience make many so. I'm not interested in preserving the status quo. I want to overthrow it. Fear is secured by a dread of punishment. Minds are of three kinds. One is capable of thinking for itself. Another is able to understand the thinking of others. And a third can neither think for itself nor understand the thinking of others. The first is of the highest excellence. The second is excellent. And the third is worthless. Men never do good, unless necessity drives them to it. But when they are free to choose, and can do just as they please, confusion and disorder become rampant. Men sooner forget the death of their father, than the loss of their patrimony. Any man, who tries to be good all the time, is bound to come to ruin among the great number, who are not good. For the mob is always impressed by appearances, and by results, and the world is composed of the mob. It is often found, that modesty and humility, not only do no good, but are positively hurtful when they are shown to the arrogant who have taken up a prejudice against you either from envy or from any other cause. A prince never lacks legitimate reasons to break his promise. Change has no constituency.
whoever is the cause of another becoming powerful, is ruined himself. There is simply no comparison between a man who is armed and one who is not. It is simply unreasonable to expect that an armed man should obey one who is unarmed, or that an unarmed man should remain safe and secure when his servants are armed. When neither their property nor their honor is touched, the majority of men live content. In war, discipline can do more than fury. Results are often obtained by impetuosity and daring, which could never have been obtained by ordinary methods. Men generally decide upon a middle course, which is most hazardous, for they know neither how to be entirely good, nor entirely bad. Benefits should be conferred gradually, and in that way they will taste better. One must consider the final result. For, in truth, there is no sure way of holding other than by destroying. Men rise from one ambition to another. First, they seek to secure themselves against attack, and then they attack others. He who makes war his profession cannot be otherwise than vicious. War makes thieves, and peace brings them to the gallows. Tardiness often robs us opportunity and the dispatch of our forces. A man, who is used to acting in one way never changes, he must come to ruin when the times, in changing, no longer are in harmony with his ways. Men are always wicked at bottom, unless they are made good by some compulsion. He who becomes a prince through the favor of the people should always keep on good terms with them 
which it is easy for him to do, since all they ask is not to be oppressed. It is necessary that the prince should know how to color his nature well, and how to be a hypocrite and dissembler. For men are so simple, and yield so much to immediate necessity, that the deceiver will never lack dupes. There should be many judges, for few will always do the will of few. Therefore, it is unnecessary for a prince to have all the good qualities I have enumerated, but it is very necessary to appear to have them. The best fortress which a prince can possess is the affection of his people. If the chief party, whether it be the people, or the army, or the nobility, which you think most useful and of most consequence to you for the conservation of your dignity, be corrupt, you must follow their humor and indulge them, and in that case honesty and virtue are pernicious. Good order makes men bold, and confusion, cowards. A wise ruler ought never to keep faith, when by doing so it would be against his interests. Nothing is so unhealthy or unstable as the reputation for power that is not based on one's own power. War is just when it is necessary. Arms are permissible, when there is no hope except in arms. Never lead your soldiers to battle if you have not first confirmed their spirit, and known them to be without fear and ordered. And never test them, except when you see that they hope to win. When settling disputes between his subjects, he should ensure that his judgment is irrevocable and he should be so regarded that no one ever dreams of trying to deceive or trick him. Decide, which is the line of conduct that presents the fewest drawbacks and then follow it out as being the best one. Because one never finds anything perfectly pure and unmixed or exempt from danger. Men are more ready to offend one who desires to be beloved, than one who wishes to be feared.
princes and governments are far more dangerous than other elements within society. There is nothing more difficult to take in hand, more perilous to conduct, or more uncertain in its success, than to take the lead in the introduction of a new order of things. Whoever takes it upon himself to establish a commonwealth and prescribe laws must presuppose all men naturally bad, and that they will yield to their innate evil passions, as often as they can do so with safety. The nature of man is such that people consider themselves put under an obligation as much by the benefits they confer as by those they receive. He who has annexed them, if he wishes to hold them, has only to bear in mind two considerations. The one, that the family of their former lord is extinguished. The other, that neither their laws nor their taxes are altered, so that in a very short time they will become entirely one body with the old principality. I say that every prince must desire to be considered merciful and not cruel. He must, however, take care not to misuse this mercifulness. The reformer has enemies in all who profit by the old order and only lukewarm defenders in all those who would profit by the new order. The princes, who have done great things are the ones who have taken little account of their promises. God and nature have thrown all human fortunes into the midst of mankind, and they are thus attainable rather by rapine than by industry, by wicked actions rather than by good. Hence it is that men feed upon each other, and those who cannot defend themselves must be worried.
and here one must not that hatred is acquired, just as much by means of good actions as by bad ones. And so, as I said above, if a prince wishes to maintain the state, he is often obliged not to be good. Because whenever that group which you believe you need to support you is corrupted, whether it be the common people, the soldiers, or the nobles, it is to your advantage to follow their inclinations in order to satisfy them, and then good actions are your enemy. One should never allow chaos to develop in order to avoid going to war. Because one does not avoid a war, but instead puts it off to his disadvantage. The greatest remedy that is used against a plan of the enemy is to do voluntarily what he plans that you do by force. States that rise quickly, just as all the other things of nature that are born and grow rapidly, cannot have roots and ramifications. The first bad weather kills them. Besides what has been said, people are fickle by nature and it is as simple to convince them of something but difficult to hold them in that conviction. And, therefore, affairs should be managed in such a way that when they no longer believe, they can be made to believe by force. For whoever conquers a free town and does not demolish it, commits a great error, and may expect to be ruined himself. The prince who relies upon their words, without having otherwise provided for his security, is ruined. For friendships that are won by awards, and not by greatness and nobility of soul, although deserved, yet are not real, and cannot be depended upon in time of adversity. When men receive favors from someone they expected to do the mill, they are under a greater obligation to their benefactor. Good order and discipline in any army are to be depended upon more than courage alone. War should be the only study of a prince. He should consider peace only as a breathing time, which gives him leisure to contrive and furnishes his ability to execute military plans. That prince is highly esteemed who conveys this impression of himself. And he, who is highly esteemed is not easily conspired against. For, provided it is well known that he is an excellent man, 
and revered by his people. He can only be attacked with difficulty. The main foundations of every state, new states as well as ancient or composite ones, are good laws and good arms. You cannot have good laws without good arms. And where there are good arms, good laws inevitably follow. Nothing is of greater importance in time of war than in knowing how to make the best use of a fair opportunity when it is offered. A prince must not have any other object nor any other thought, but war, its institutions, and its discipline because that is the only art befitting one who commands. Every little advantage is a great moment when men have to come to blows. I believe that it is possible for one to praise, without concern, any man after he is dead. Since every reason and supervision for adulation is lacking, It cannot be called ingenuity to kill one's fellow citizens, to betray friends, to be without faith, without mercy, without religion. By these means one can acquire power, but not glory. And if, to be sure, sometimes you need to conceal a fact with words, do it in such a way that it does not become known, or if it does become known, that you have a ready and quick defense. In conclusion, the arms of others either fall from your back, or they weigh you down, or they bind you fast.
Whoever desires to found a state and give it laws must start with assuming that all men are bad and ever ready to display their vicious nature whenever they may find occasion for it. You must never believe that the enemy does not know how to conduct his own affairs. Indeed, if you want to be deceived less and want to bear less danger, the more the enemy is weak, or the less the enemy is cautious, so much more must you esteem him. Human beings remain constant in their methods of conduct. For as laws are necessary that good manners be preserved, so there is need of good manners that law may be maintained. When they remain in garrison, Soldiers are maintained with fear and punishment. When they are then led to war, with hope and reward. Without doubt, ferocious and disordered men are much weaker than timid and ordered ones. For order chases fear from men and disorder lessens ferocity. It is the duty of a man of honor to teach others the good which he has not been able to do himself because of the malignity of the times, that this good finally can be done by another more loved in heaven. It is a base thing to look to others for your defense instead of depending upon yourself. That defense alone is effectual, sure, and durable, which depends upon yourself and your own valor. Sometimes, it has been of great moment while the fight is going on, to disseminate words that pronounce the enemy's captain to be dead, or to have been conquered by another part of the army. Many times this has given victory to him who used it. For a prince should have two fears. One, internal concerning his subjects. The other, external, concerning foreign powers. From the latter, he can always defend himself by his good troops and friends. And he will always have good friends, if he has good troops. For one change always leaves a dovetail into which another will fit.
all who contribute to the overthrow of religion, or to the ruin of kingdoms and commonwealths, all who are foes to letters, and to the arts which confer honor and benefit on the human race, among whom I reckon the impious, the cruel, the ignorant, the indolent, the base and the worthless, are held in infamy and detestation. And truly, it is a very natural and ordinary thing to desire to acquire. And always, when men do it who can, they will be praised or not blamed. But when they cannot and wish to do it anyway, here lies the error and the blame. Politics have no relation to morals. I desire to go to hell and not to heaven. In the former I shall enjoy the company of popes, kings and princes, while in the latter are only beggars, monks and apostles. Never was anything great achieved without danger. <laughs> 